it seems like I've been driving for hundreds of miles from any large city here in Ohio. I haven't seen a car in miles, and all of a sudden now I'm out in the middle of nowhere at the cemetery, and I see a car. Oh, there it is. Okay, so I finally see a sign. Hey everybody, Steve here in Knox County, Ohio. Just a, a few miles outside of Mount Vernon, Ohio, where Paul Lind was born. The cemetery is called Amity Cemetery, and it's really out in the middle of nowhere. I drove for two hours to get here from Cleveland, and it's a beautiful day. It's a sunny sky, beautiful day. Wasn't sure what to expect. I mean, there's a hawk. Look at this hawk flying over. There have been a couple of hawks flying over. This is just surrounded by farmland and looks like forest. Beautiful location. He's laid to rest here with his family. And I'm glad I made the side trip. I've made quite a few side trips on this trip, and this is one of the, the longest side trips. But I always loved Paul Lynn. He was always so funny. I know he was very troubled, and it sounds like maybe he wasn't real happy during his life which often happens with comedians. I mean, he was the funny man in movies and on TV, always laughing, had that unforgettable laugh. But in real life, I think maybe he wasn't quite as happy as he let on to be in front of the camera. In 1974, he was voted America's favorite comedian. And I was just reading his Find a Great Memorial page and didn't realize he only appeared in 10 episodes of Bewitched. I would have thought that he was on Bewitched the entire run of the series. I mean, he just stole the show whenever he was on. In fact, he stole the show in everything that he was in. I mean, he was just so unique and so funny. And he appeared in many movies and many TV shows, but is probably best remembered, if not for Bewitched, then definitely for Hollywood Squares. He appeared in more than 700 episodes of Hollywood Squares. He became the icon on the show. And, but in spite of all of his huge success, he apparently wasn't very happy and had a real drinking problem and many run-ins with the law and arrests for DUI. And toward the end, he really didn't seem to be a very happy person, which is so sad to hear. For someone who, who made everyone else laugh and made everyone else so happy, it's sad that often comedians just can't do the same for themselves. So he only lived to be 55 years old. He died very young. He was found dead in his home, and the coroner ruled it a heart attack. And even though he never publicly came out as gay, I mean, this was back in the 1970s. This was back at a time when most every actor and comedian and performer and entertainer pretty much just stayed in the closet. So that's not a surprise. But he was just so over-the-top flamboyant, and I think everyone just assumed that he was gay, or maybe no one really thought about it or cared, and that's fine. And back then, the press usually didn't mention things like that, didn't cover stories like that, usually. But eventually, his story did come out. It did come out that he was gay. I don't think it was a surprise to anybody, and I don't think anyone cared, similar to Liberace. All that really mattered was that he was extremely talented and very lovable, at least, at least to audiences. I'm not sure he was so lovable in real life to a lot of people. I mean, I've heard conflicting stories, but again, I've learned to believe just about half of what I read online, if that. There's just so much information online that's incorrect, so who knows? All I know is that he was a huge part of my life growing up. I mean, he was just a staple on television and in movies when I was growing up, and always good for a laugh, and just a really fun, funny guy. And so I definitely wanted to come and visit his gravesite here today, even though it meant traveling a couple hundred miles and hours and hours out of the way to do that in the middle of Ohio. But I've really fallen in love with Ohio. I mean, it's just such, so far, it's just been a wonderful state. Every city's been great. The hotels have been great. The people have been great. The weather's been great. I don't know. I, I really like it here in Ohio. It's just really nice. So anyway, I'm glad I came to visit Paul End. I'm curious, have any of you been here to visit his gravesite? As you can see, lots of people have. Lots of people have left all kinds of trinkets at his gravesite, and I'm glad to see that they've also made the trek out here. So, now I just called the cemetery where Agnes Moorhead is laid to rest. I'm sure if you're a Bewitch fan, you remember Agnes Moorhead played Samantha's mom in Dora, and she co-starred with Paul Lind as Uncle Arthur 
And the cemetery said that her mausoleum, where she's laid to rest, is open to the public today. And they and she and the person I spoke to actually gave me directions within the mausoleum how to find her grave site. So if I can get over there in the next couple of hours, she's also kind of out in the middle of nowhere. But she's heading in the direction of a city where I am planning to get to eventually today, hopefully today. So I'm going to see if I can pop in and pay my respects to Agnes Moorhead as well. So stay tuned to see if I get there. I, I don't know if I'll share her video separately or if I'll combine the two. We'll see. They're both right here in Ohio, both born and both buried here in Ohio. So I may just include them together. We'll see. On the way here, just a mile or so away, I've seen quite a few yellow caution crossing signs with pictures of little horses and buggies for the Amish. I didn't really realize that the Amish lived all the way up here in Ohio. I always associate them with Pennsylvania, but I guess we're really not that far from Pennsylvania. Yeah, it sounds like a tree trimmer in the background. There's always a tree trimmer in the background or a leaf blower or a lawnmower or a weed whacker when I go to the cemetery, as you know, if you've watched my channel. So I wonder if Paul Lynn lived over there in one of these homes in this tiny little town which probably isn't much different today than it was back when he grew up here. As I'm walking back to my car, I decided to check my Google Maps app on my phone to see just how far it is from here to Dayton, Ohio, and Dayton Memorial Park Cemetery, where Agnes Moorhead is laid to rest. And it looks like it's at least two hours away. So I decided I better call her cemetery again and ask what time the mausoleum closes and I'm glad I did because it turns out the mausoleum actually closes at 4 o'clock in the afternoon and it's after 2 o'clock right now so there's no way I can make it there in time to visit her crypt which will be inside the locked mausoleum. So I'll just have to visit her tomorrow morning after the cemetery opens and share that visit in a separate video. Since I've already been driving for hours and hours and hours today, having hit the road at sunrise, I decided instead of driving all the way to Dayton, Ohio this afternoon, that I would just go ahead and stop about halfway in Columbus, Ohio. So if you're curious to see what the room looks like where I spent the night, keep watching. I found this Days Inn in Grove City, which is in South Columbus, and just off of Highway 71. The rate for this Wednesday night was $88.11, and that included all taxes. And as you can see, the room is very nice and clean. It doesn't smell of smoke. It's a non-smoking room, but sometimes even when you request a non-smoking room, they still smell like smoke, since everyone back here in the Midwest and the East Coast seems to still smoke. I can see the highway out the window, but with the room fan on low, I can't even hear the highway noise. I've stayed in quite a few days in motels on this trip and they've all been pretty nice. And they've all had microwaves which has been very handy since I don't go out to eat at night. I just eat in my room while I'm backing up and editing my videos which usually takes a few hours to do. When I left California on this road trip, gas was about $6 a gallon. But as soon as I left my home state, gas prices began to drop dramatically. And I think I've averaged around $3.50 per gallon throughout the entire trip. So that's a lot less than I was expecting to pay on this road trip. That's kind of sad when $3.50 a gallon seems cheap for gas. As always, thanks for joining me on this very long road trip down memory lane until our next trip to the cemetery together. Thanks for sharing the memories, everybody.